Good evening and welcome to our new uh, webinar today. Uh, today, there will be a new kind of uh, talk delivered by uh, Pradeep uh, Thotekar. Uh, he is physiotherapist and he is going to talk on uh, recent advance in physiotherapy. I think uh, we are seeing you know, lots of patients of pain, different pain like uh, joint pain and back pain and uh, shoulder pain like that. But uh, apart from NSAIDs and anti-inflammatory and analgesics, uh, each and every patient requires physiotherapy in some amount. So today, we all will uh, learn so many new things what is happening in physiotherapy. So for that, I uh, request Dr. Preeti Shankar to introduce uh, Dr. Pradeep. Thank you, Dr. Sanjay. Uh, so today I will be introducing, it is my honor and privilege to introduce Dr. Pradeep Thotekat, uh, with whom I have personal experience also. He is uh, specialized in musculoskeletal disorders and sports medicine. He's a physiotherapist, but also a very active nutritionist and he has had his basic tra uh, training in yoga. He has uh, graduated in 2009, and uh, he, has, he is a proprietor and he is a physiotherapist along with his wife at Deep Physiotherapist and Wellness Clinic at Bangalore. He's, uh, he's graduated, he, was, he is assistant professor of Padma Shri Institute of Physiotherapy from May 2021 till present. Manipal Hospital, he was sports physiotherapist, senior sports physiotherapist for a couple of years. And uh, now his additional experiences, Ramakrishna Mission Hospital of Mumbai, Kar, from 2009 to 2011. He has many scientific articles to his credit. And what is very, uh, what I would like to highlight now here is that he has started uh, he has done a lot of research and he has developed deep spinal cord injury home recovery program for which he travels to Kerala and also to Dubai and other countries uh, because he has become a master in that. His key areas are pain management, exercise therapy, ergonomics and biomechanics, PEMF, which is pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, which is uh, was new to me also. Dry needling, cupping, and nutritional therapy. He is also a yoga instru instructor. He has done that from Pune. And his basic qualification of physiotherapy is in Kerala 2009. He is, a, um, I would say that he has special interest in spine physiotherapy uh, in general. And he is a very cool and calm and soft-spoken person. Over to uh, Pradeep Tottekat. Thank you so much, Dr. Preeti, for giving me this opportunity to speak in front of all the seminar doctors. And uh, uh, thank you so much, first of all. And A little louder, Dr. Pradeep. Uh, yes. So thank you so much, Dr. Preeti Shankar, for giving me this opportunity to talk in front of all these eminent doctors and uh, today as all of you know my topic is in latest trends in physiotherapeutics so, so here uh, i have gathered uh, all possible uh, information as well as the recent trends which are practicing in india as well as abroad so we will go to the slides one by one and uh, I, I can I can I'll take you to these uh, 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 topics, different topics and different recent uh, topics of recent trends in physiotherapy. And I'll try my level best to educate everyone so that all of you are aware of what is happening in the field of physiotherapy. Shall we go to the slides one by one? Yes, we can see them. Yeah, so we'll go to the next slide. So here the contents, what we are going to talk today as one is the definition and the history, traditional techniques versus the modern innovations, importance of embracing new technology, and what are the new technologies which are being used in the field of physiotherapy, advances uh, in manual therapy, 
and mind body therapy these are the recent trends which are being practiced i we will come to them one by one therapeutic nutrition modern modalities and regenerate regenerative medicine and physiotherapist we'll go to the first slide next slide so physiotherapy as a profession has been developing from the time of world war world war 1 and world war 2 when the conventional medicine was not enough to attend the various survivors of the war the disabilities and other paralysis uh, the the mass disabilities and the casualties and other uh paralysis the conventional medicine was not really equipped to bring these people back into their life so the among the medical professionals uh, in, including doctors nurses and other paramedics they started they themselves initiated like you know a uh, uh, new ways of rehabilitation uh, rehabilitation of these disabled people uh, by uh, by involving them into various activities like exercise uh, uh, giving them uh, developing a new ambulatory aids uh, walking aids wheelchair training them various kinds of transfer and in this course of time they under, they they could understand the scope of developing a new professionals which are which their their aim is exclusively exclusive to attend such uh, disabilities and paralysis and gradually the uh, physiotherapy profession was developing from the time of during the world war 1 as well as world war 2 and by the time of 1952 this profession has almost reached an independent status and many uh, states in usa uh, the professionals started practicing independently out of the hospital and rehabilitation setup and uh, slowly it progressed into an independent profession so being said that if you look into the history of uh, physiotherapy profession in india it was the outbreak of polio in 1952 in mumbai which marked the beginning of physiotherapy profession in india so that polio outbreak has led to the uh, start of kick start of physiotherapy profession in india and in the next year in 1953 the first school of school and the center of physiotherapy was established in mumbai kem hospital as well as seth sg hospital these were the two hospitals started physiotherapy colleges and that is in 1953 in 1955 the first independent uh, an independent body uh indian association of physiotherapists was established and till now this uh, indian association of physiotherapists is doing is representing uh indian physiotherapists as well as representing the physiotherapists to the entire world of physiotherapy uh to the uh, other countries and they are setting standards and they are helping the physiotherapy profession to come up with various research aids and various guidelines a guidelines and helping this profession to come up and at par with the current uh, uh, current development in various other parts of the world they also conduct webinars seminars and various workshops so that the indian physiotherapist are well informed about various uh, developments across the globe now if, so this is in so this is basically the uh, uh, development the recent development of physiotherapy as a profession and a professionals in india as well as around the globe but if we really look back uh, look a little back uh, look into the history we can see various indigenous medicines uh, which are which indigenous medicines like ayurveda in india uh, traditional chinese medicine which belong to china and various egyptians egypt egyptian medicines have been practicing various types or various uh, procedures various types of physiotherapeutic approaches in treating patients for example in ayurveda the use of massage the uh, the use of uh, various techniques even in shushudha was men uh, shushudha mentions about massage as well as hydrotherapy uh, and our indigenous yoga various uh, schools of yoga uh, as well as various uh, 
martial arts which are prevailing in north south india and east and west which they all used an indigenous system of treatment using physical modalities either by exercise stretching some kind of pressure on the body some kind of uh, uh, applying some kind of instruments on the body to release some muscles to release some joints so this system has been like the physiotherapy or the physical medicine has been practicing in our history our ancestors during as a part of treatment uh, and these all these things are very well documented so we have this uh, physiotherapy has a very good if we can date it back to prehistoric time and we can see the development of a profession as an or as an independent practice so now the physiotherapy as defined by world health organization as an independent profession that focuses on assessing planning and implementing rehabilitative programs and but now uh, this definition definitely need uh, some kind of uh, uh, need to be re refined and redefined because here it is talking about assessing planning and in implementing rehabilitative programs but now the physiotherapist has come for friend in preventive as well as diagnostic uh, the, the physiotherapy skills or the physiotherapy approaches has well developed in preventive as well as the diagnostic aspect of various physical illness we'll go to the next slide where we can uh, discuss where uh, uh so as i told you uh, like now we have the traditional tech uh, so here it is not a comparison about traditional technique as well uh, with the modern innovation it is just telling how the physiotherapy started and how it is then and how it is now so when physiotherapy has started they basically used exercises and various uh, ambulatory devices to help the people who are disabled and uh, Uh, they were using various manual therapy techniques like mobilizing a joint uh, improving the mobility to improve the mobility of a joint various modalities they were using like ultrasound to for pain management various kind of stimulation like tens uh, elect electrical muscle stimulation to improve the uh, uh, to maintain the tone of a paralyzed muscle either so these are the conventional thing which has been used from the time of uh, when uh, from the time uh, i can say at least from the time the physiotherapy has evolved various stimulation ultrasound devices has been using for treatment and most of the treatment were based like opd based or inpatient based or home based or clinic based but now so this were the scenario i can say till at least 10 years back but now from due to the development of uh, or especially during the covid time and the development of artificial intelligence and various other technology uh, the physiotherapy has gone into a different level of function and a different level of delivery of physiotherapeutics or physiotherapy so now if i say about uh, like you know the current practice of physiotherapy they are not only practicing from an opd or an inpatient based now there are various mobile applications the physiotherapist have developed by which the physiotherapist can monitor a patient from any part of the world like from my clinic i can see the progress of a patient who is in usa or any other part of india whether they are doing the exercise properly whatever exercise they do they can uh, it can be directly monitored by a physiotherapist or guided by a physiotherapist with various mobile application which was not the case maybe la maybe a 10 years before uh now an another uh, noteworthy thing is the evidence based practice uh, which has come into the physiotherapy profession so as like any other profession like during the time of how it has evolved it has evolved through research development and whatever the studies have come and they started implementing the results of the studies into the profession same way the physiotherapy has also uh, evolved through research and development and nowadays a lot of evidence the practices are based on evidence and it is giving a lot of confidence to these professionals to work with integrity and confidence to tackle various health related issues to my personal experience like when the uh, like uh, uh, 
at the profession during the graduation as well as during the post graduation graduation is a four and a half year course and post graduation is a two year course so totally it will come around six and a half years during graduation as well as during post graduation these physiotherapists are trained in doing research clinical research either submitting and uh, uh, they are supposed to submit a research paper as a part of their graduation as well as a post graduation so especially after a post graduation the physiotherapists are very well versed in conducting a clinical research so uh, what has how this is helping the professional growth in india uh, in india is most of the therapists are submitting a, a research an individual research at the time of their graduation as well as post graduation and most and this is giving an uh, uh, this is giving an very uh, critical analysis this kind of training is giving a, a critical uh, giving and training on critical analysis as well as research analogy is helping the physiotherapist to deliver the treatment at the time of delivery of treatment at the time of uh, uh, rehabilitation and progress they could collect the data from the time of delivering of treatment to the time of uh, progress during the progress and the time of stopping the physiotherapists are very well versed in collecting data and these data has been helping in improving the profession as well as improving the profession and developing various innovations so i will uh, I, uh, fortunately i could publish uh, four papers uh, from 2015 16 17 and i'll show it in the next slide so this itself uh, so the, i could publish papers only because of the uh, development of this profession in uh, in india because till uh, uh, what i understood if before nine, during the time of 1950s and 60s we were solely depending on uh, the for like us australia and other canadian countries whatever research has been published there we were solely depending on these research papers and studies to practice in india but now high quality researches are produced in india itself and and many physiotherapists from india has become pioneers pioneer trainers and they have become international trainers and speakers and traveling across the globe and giving training to physiotherapist uh, all over the world and there are physiotherapists coming to india from other countries to learn the techniques personally i have uh, have developed uh, i i could uh, travel to various countries like malaysia uh, kuwait and traveling still traveling across india to train physiotherapist in a special program called spinal cord injury rehabilitation it is a home based program how to rehabilitate a spinal cord injury patient and how to help how to help the spinal cord injury or paraplegic or quadriplegic uh, to recover at a home setup this idea has come when i was working in manipal because uh, during the time when i was treating the spinal cord injury patients many of the patients uh, couldn't sustain or couldn't uh, uh, continue the physiotherapy uh, because almost all the paralysis or the neuro cases may go for months uh, maybe one uh, six months seven months or one year two year and most of these people were uh, work from outstation they come they take a house nearby in 3 4 months they stop the physio and they go back to their native one of the main reason is the financial constraints so they were asking or whenever they go back they were asking what we can go and do at home what uh, can you teach something by which we can have a similar progress at home that has helped that provoked me to develop a program by which not necessarily a physiotherapist even any of the family members can learn this rehabilitation technique and can help that particular individual who is affected with spinal cord injury uh, to do uh, to do the recovery program and come up to different levels of independence so uh, so uh, what i mean to say the practice in india uh, like you know uh, uh, the evolution of physiotherapy uh, is in uh, the physiotherapy practice is evolving uh, like any other medical profession and it we are setting standards to the other countries and up to the world and people are coming here to learn and other modern innovations i should say about the telehealth were as i uh, told you uh, earlier like we can offer remote consultations and
through telecommunication technologies. So physiotherapists are able to communicate with uh, uh, patients around the globe, monitor them, guide them. And they are also appreciating Indian physiotherapy and their caliber. So this is just an introduction about from where the, from where the profession has come and how it has evolved as an ind independent profession and what is happening like no, uh, what is happening in Indian physiotherapy. Now we'll go to the next slide. Uh, again, uh, so these are the paper, papers I could publish and uh, this is just I have mentioned because the research in the field of physiotherapy, uh, the research and the development in the field of physiotherapy, especially in India, is as good as uh, the other countries and uh, the um, physiotherapists who are graduating and graduating in India are delivering a, a good service. Um, so I just want to uh, just uh, showing some published papers. Uh, I mean, the, public, the papers I could publish and many uh, physiotherapists are doing it. And many of them I could publish in international as well as national journals. We'll go to the next slide. So uh, here, uh, physiotherapists uh, are otherwise in general, all the, uh, these are like, you know, why it is important of embracing the new technologies, because as we know, the technologies are evolving like anything from a uh, computer to the web world, uh, from the internet world to the machine learning, to the artificial intelligence and various uh, uh, technologies are developing robotic devices. So physiotherapy field is also embracing this technology and with the help of this technology, many of the treatments are delivered. And uh, so at the time when we are delivering the treatment with the help of modern uh, technology, uh, we could understand how precise it has become and how effective it has become. So it is just, uh, just uh, this, this is about how, what is the importance of embracing this new technology and how it is helping the profession. So it has increased the precision of the treatment delivery. If I tell you, I, I can tell you an example. Uh, the physiotherapists are widely practicing something called dry needling. These are small needles of 0.25 mm, and these needles are inserted into various tissues, especially the muscles or to the nerve endings or to various, uh, even to the periosteum, depending on the condition. So widely it is used as a trigger point release technique. So here the physiotherapist has to identify the trigger points with palpation, and uh, they insert this needle and uh, there are various techniques. Sometimes we keep it there and we, sometimes we stimulate this needle with an electrode. Uh, now, so, so this we have been practicing since many years, maybe 10 plus years or 15 plus years. The dry needling has come to the field of physiotherapy from last 10 to uh, last 15 to 20 years. But now what is the recent trend is happening, we are able to put the needle precisely on that trigger point, which is guided with ultrasound, ultrasound imaging. So this our precision of uh, uh, positioning the needle uh, has had this, the technological advancement has helped in our field and the, uh, the, uh, the and it is uh, reflecting in the outcome as well as uh, the patient, it is reflecting in the uh, results. Another thing I, if I should say is an EMG biofeedback, like whenever we ask a person to do a movement, for example, I want a person's a person to do uh, activate his back muscle, back muscle, lower back muscle, there are a lot of different, different group of muscles are there. So uh, when we keep an EMG device on a particular muscle, and when we give the correct cues to the patient, okay, gently excuse your abdomen or gently breathe out, we will be able to show that patient or the patient can get a real time understanding of he is recruiting the right muscle or not, which is very, very, very important in activation of core muscles, pelvic floor muscles, for especially in, uh, in gynecological rehabilitation. Uh, the activation of pelvic floor, activation of the core muscles or abdominal muscle, post-surgery, post-delivery. It's very difficult. It's very challenging for the physiotherapist to make them understand how to activate. If suppose if I say about diaphragm, pelvic diaphragm, uh, if I say about the uh, transverse abdominus or 
like you know, to I, to trans uh, to convert into the layman's language and make the patient understand it has been a huge struggle but with such modern technologies we we are able to give a real time feedback to the patient if the moment the patient is trying or attempting a movement he knows yes, we are getting an idea that yes, it's the right muscle is being recruited or is the wrong muscle is being recruited and by which the patient is able to learn by which is the moment they should do by which the muscles are engaging and they are getting and by which the results are faster and better another uh, thing which is uh, helping the new technologies are helping is improved patient engagement as i told you about emg biofeedback the engagement of the patients are better in such when we are using such technologies and other technologies which we are using currently in India is virtual reality. Uh, we, in the coming slides, we will come to know how this virtual reality physiotherapists are using to engage the patient to the patient and engagement. So the, there is a principle called active patient participation. The patient when we when we make the patient when the active patient participation is the patient is engaging in an activity either a an exercise or any kind of postural activities both mentally and physical attend attentiveness of that patient is is very important to get a result so here uh, such technologies like virtual reality technologies if the application of such technology is helping us to have a real time as well as a proper engagement of the patients and which is reflecting in an easy as well as a very effective outcome. Then, as I told you, the another thing is we are able to uh, like you know, it, uh, access to remote care that is telehealth devices. And uh, I, I travel across India and there are places I remote villages have traveled where there is not a single clinic or there is not, not, a, not a hotels or a, a proper basic facilities are there. And I have stayed with patient. I am stayed at patient's house for two, three days and in teaching them this home recovery program. So uh, now I know how much uh, this, this telehealth has helped me to more remotely monitor them and talk to them. And I can see the confidence in the face of patients like when they are able to follow and when they are able to correct them through online, they are doing the exercise at home. And definitely I should thank the new technologies and uh, we physiotherapists are very well embracing this new technology. And another thing is what we are seeing, as I told you, faster recovery. It is due to like you know, various technologies have come and which is helping the faster technology. We will come to the uh, various uh, uh, things uh, in the coming slide, like PEM of shockwave therapy, near infrared, IASTM, cupping. Uh, these, uh, these approaches or these modalities are helping us for a faster recovery and the rehabilitation time is coming or the treatment duration is coming down. And uh, these modern technologies, this is it's very important to embrace the modern technology because it help, it is helping us to uh, uh, to stay current and competitive uh, uh, in this field as well as to the world among the uh, physiotherapists among the uh, other uh, among the globe. We'll go to the next slide. So here we are going to, so now the coming slides are about various technologies, what the physiotherapists are using in India. So there are various wearable technologies and uh, which is revolutionizing physiotherapy. As you know, like uh, nowadays, uh, you, most of the people are using smart watches and other gadgets which can monitor health. But uh, when it, when it, uh, but in the field of physiotherapy, like, you know, the, the, we can, uh, uh, there are little more precise or there are high precise instruments have developed in the field of physiotherapy and the physiotherapists are using it uh, which are something like activity smart garments I'll, I'll i'm just these are the some examples which we are using in india as well as in abroad smart garments they capture the real time motion data for example there are a special type of dress the where the patient or that uh, person who is going analysis movement analysis called basically movement analysis the patient or the person subject will be wearing it and when the person moves his hands and legs uh, so these movement will be converted into an hologram or converted into a 2d image and a 3d image and we analyze this image and we try to find out uh, uh, what is deficient and what is wrong in that moment. For example, it is more helpful in uh, understanding and it's not only help, help in understanding 
thermal dysfunction it is also very helpful in uh, improving the performance of an athlete for example like when we do a movement analysis or a gait analysis or a running analysis we are able to find out where this person is lacking which is the technique whether uh, is the person is uh, whether the person is having any joint restriction in joint range of motion the posture is correct so such smart wearable devices are able to create a virtual body of the person at a 2d level and 3d level and when we go through these videos we are able to find the posture the movement the movement restriction and this also helping us to develop a treatment strategy or a rehabilitation strategy for that particular individual and another thing is activity trackers monitor daily steps heart rate and sleep like there are various tracking devices are there which is helping especially in the field of cardiopulmonary rehabilitation uh, 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 the cardiopulmonary physiotherapists who are uh, specialized in cardiopulmonary rehabilitation they are able to track the patient's progress the how the uh, like you know they are and based on the progress and based on these data which are collected we are able to slowly progress their cardiovascular endurance and aerobic endurance and again very well used in india and uh, this specialist uh, especially the cardiovascular physiotherapist cardiopulmonary physiotherapist are using those things as a, then the biofeedback devices provide feedback of muscular activity small act, uh, feedback devices which are applied on the muscles and we are seeing how much that muscle is being fired whether the entire muscle is fired or the firing is limited what could be the reason of uh, uh, like no restriction of that firing muscle firing and we are able to uh, improve the recruitment of the muscle fibers and uh, uh, the exercise or the movement becomes very precise uh, now the benefits as i already because it's just a repetition objective we are able to collect a lot of data and this data is helping us to refine our treatment and use it for further evaluation in future we are getting a real time feedback of what the person is doing right or wrong with the emg devices and as i told you ultrasound guided dry needling procedure it is helping us a real time whether we are hitting the right spot or not remote monitoring and the main application of such devices are in the form of gait analysis and rehabilitation post surgical recovery monitoring pain management and muscle activation we will see how it is being uh, done practically we'll go to the next slide okay so here is the application of a virtual reality uh, in rehabilitation of a patient suffering from a spinal cord injury or a stroke so here you can imagine you can you can just consider this patient who is in a suspension therapy device and who is in a virtual reality device as well so uh, consider the patient is suffering from a spinal cord injury or uh, leading to a quadriparesis or quadriplegia or some level of motor function is being left in that per per patient consider this patient's hobby is swimming or consider this patient's profession was swimming now when i approach a spinal cord injury patient who is completely in a bedridden stage and uh, when i when i ask that patient to move the hand or i want i am assisting that patient to uh, do some movements uh, as, uh, like so these are very difficult for a patients to like you know maybe to understand because the sensory uh, because of the involvement of uh, sense uh, because the involvement of sensory nerves uh, sensory nervous system as well as the motor nervous system they are completely deprived of all these sensations and they are not able to relate what i am uh, and they are not able to execute the movement and it of what happens over a period of time now imagine i am putting this person in a virtual reality environment where the person when they when they are when they are wearing the virtual reality device they are going back here this person is a swimmer and we are taking him to a virtual reality of a swimming under the water so his memory of swimming his previous experience of swimming is helping him like if i so he's helping him to move his hands and as he tried to move his hand his body is moving forward as he tried to move his hand to the left side his body is moving to the right side and left side as if he feels that he is swimming inside a water and he is exploring this underwater whatever the setup is inside that virtual reality is able to explore so here the uh, the, uh, the thing is uh, here we are since it is creating a virtual reality here the patient is able to relate his uh, what he is doing and in disguise we are getting uh, moments the active 
participation which is the key in neuro rehabilitation or which is the key in neuroplasticity the active participation of the patient mentally and physically so the virtual reality so this is an example how we can we can see but still it is used in india as well there are various hospitals and clinics are using virtual reality and uh, i i have a personal experience i was working in mumbai uh, in a special school called scc society for the education of crippled in santa cruz and in 19 uh, sorry in 2009 along with uh, uh, ramkrishna mission hospital i was working there in part time and i could uh, buy one uh, uh, video game it is called xbo sony xbo which developed something similar to uh, virtual reality where i was dealing with Uh, small kids who are affected with polio cerebral palsy various birth defect or they don't know so these kids of uh, uh, for 3 to 15 years they are more uh, they like to play rather than do an exercise with a physiotherapist so as i give them various uh, joysticks by which they can move their hand and they can see uh, a, a, a their image on the screen and they are moving they are kicking a ball and they can see what is happening on the virtual reality screen is in front of them and it has helped them to engage in exercise engage in activities and it, it has produced a lot of results so uh, this is just an example of the latest technology which physiotherapists are using and the main application here is the pain management balance training and motor skill improvement so the pain management the technology is when we are able to distract the patient from his body and we are giving a new environment uh, this distraction is helping them uh, and this distraction from their uh, their own body to a new environment this uh, helping them to uh, focus on a new environment and this technique is helping in pain management and balance training of course virtual obstacles are given in the uh, virtual reality world where the person has to uh, tackle these uh, 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 obstacles which are seen on the screen motor skill development as you can see the person is a paralyzed person and he is trying to swim in this swimming he tend to move the hands in possible direction so we are able to understand the potential which is hidden in that patient which otherwise is very difficult to uh, do a motor assessment of a spinal cord injury though we have scales to assess but it is very challenging but with the help of new technology it is easy to understand not only to de uh, deliver therapy this kind of a virtual environment help us to understand the potential of that uh, patient and we will get an idea to what extent i can to what independence i can bring this patient into we'll go to the next slide so then the other uh, like like what virtual reality the other innovations what the indian physicists and as well as the physiotherapists are globally are using are robotics artificial intelligence in robotics we 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 can see we use exoskeletal devices robotic great robotic gait training trainers robotic arm therapy devices i have just mentioned only a few which are more used in india and there are various devices which are still uh, like you know as i as as we know the technology is developing globally and various things are still coming but uh, but uh, but i am i am very proud to say that indian physiotherapists are able to understand this and uh, uh, understand as well as apply this technology in rehabilitation and we will see in the coming slide how this exoskeleton will look like so exoskeleton are wearable they are wearable robots that support or augment the limb during movement and robotic gait trainers especially used in case of uh, hemiparesis or hemiplegia or paraplegia which facilitate walking or gait training otherwise called robotic arm therapy devices something which assist the arm movements like you no know, these uh, devices are able to sense which are connected to the patient's central nervous system or to the spinal cord where the patient's uh, with the thought if the patient want to move the hand uh, that thought process that thought is converted into electrical sig signals and it is delivered to this exoskeleton and the patient try to move and along the exoskeleton will assist the movement we will see in the coming slide and the advantages of this rehabilitation what we see again repetitive and precise movement we are able to uh, uh, deliver uh, make a precise movements in the patient and it is helping them to do precise activities either it is writing or brushing or something which requires a lot of skills and it is improving the confidence of patients and reducing the rehabilitation time 
increasing the intensity we are able to push the patients to their uh, increasing the intensity because these are assistive devices by which uh, it is assisting the patient movement so that they are able to improve the endurance whether it is a cardiovascular endurance musculoskeletal endurance by increasing the intensity with the help of such assistive devices and uh, as improved patient engagement as i already told you the patient is able to actively participate in this uh, rehabilitation and we are able to collect data from these on all these machines are uh, real time data like you know, how much force the patient has uh, initiated how much assistance the patient has taken from the machine and uh, now over a period of time how the patient is progressing so if the patient has started with 10% of uh, human effort and 80% is from um, uh, from the robot and gradually the patient uh, is uh, progressing to 50% and the robot is 50% and 90% patients all these data are being recorded and it is helping and tracking the progress and we'll go to the next slide Okay, so these are the small videos of uh, whatever things so far we have discussed. One the, on the uh, one uh, when one the individual who is walking with a walking stick, he's he's a paraplegic. He's wearing an exoskeleton. Here, uh, when he uh, it's a robotic device. When this person is trying to move his right leg forward, there will be an assistance from the exoskeleton, which is powered by motor and uh, controlled by artificial intelligence. Depending on the patient's assistance, the machine assistance will come down. Depending on the patient's uh, requirement, the, uh, the machine assistance will increase. It's a highly uh, sophisticated device. But right now, so, uh, uh, like few weeks before, I could see some engineers in Kerala. In uh, they are uh, developing. They have developed an exoskeletal device, uh, 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 joining hands with physiotherapist. So it is uh, like an Indian. Uh, uh, when I try to import this exoskeleton for one of my patient uh, it was costing it was beyond the capacity of the patient and beyond my capacity to uh, get one from us but now the indian uh, one uh, indians are developing exoskeletal devices as good as as i when i when i went through the specification i could see it is as good as the uh, one which is available in the foreign market uh, that is the and this is and this robotic devices are helping a paraplegic a person who cannot walk if this person is walking now and it is making him semi-independent or independent and this is a, a big thing i want all the doctors to know how this uh, how physiotherapists are helping this paraplegic and it is uh, helping the paraplegics to walk now on the right side you can see an uh, 3d image of a person who is running this is uh, this is called a moment analysis or a running analysis, otherwise called gait analysis. Here we are keeping small small sensors on different parts. You can see that dots on the pelvis, on the elbow, or on the hand, wrist, knee. So these are the uh, dots by which uh, we 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 apply it on the patient's body and make them run. And these uh, sensors will collect this data and convert it in, convert the, into a model like this. Like, you no, know, it's a 2D model and a 3D model they convert. Here, the, uh, the, uh, the physiotherapist analyze this movement and they are able to see the pelvic drop, whether the pelvis is dropping to right side or left side. Uh, is there any uh, movement disparity or comparing the right leg and the left leg? How is the knee flexion on the right leg and the left leg? Is there any movement restriction on the ankle? So basically, this helps to enhance, improve the performance of an athlete. One of the application is this movement analysis help to improve the movement or performance of an athlete. Second thing, this help to understand where the person, where the uh, uh, at which joint level, at the hip level or at the knee level or at the ankle level, uh, the movement dysfunction is happening. Uh, so when we create such uh, such models, it is easy. Uh, the assessment becomes more easy or become more precise and we are able to localize the treatment or we are able to precise the treatment. Now, another image here, you can see the image of a feet where various colors are going from heels to toe. So this is uh, basically a device used to uh, analyze uh, pressure, uh, is to analyze how the pressure is, uh, when a person walks, uh, when a person walk, how the pressure is being delivered through the feet. So it is a uh, longitudinal uh, pressure transfer of a, this is a normal individual. When a normal individual walk during the heel strike, during the first part of the walking heel strike, 
the pressure is uh, transferred through the heel and it is going laterally through the lateral aspect of the feet and coming to the medial aspect and coming and getting transferred to the toe during the toe of phase during the lift of phase so this is a natural movement when a person walks this is how the uh, transfer of weight body weight should happen uh, through the sole through the feet but we use this technology uh, in case of a uh, when a person complains of a knee pain or a feet pain or a plantar fasciitis to know when a person walk how the weight is being distributed through the feet i'll tell you an example of a flat feet in a flat feet like situation the transfer the longitudinal transfer of body weight instead of uh, from heels from heel to the lateral aspect to the medial aspect to the big toe the weight transfer can happen through the medial arch or medial aspect and which is causing the the weight transfer is the, the distribution of body weight get disturbed and which will reflect in as ankle pain or knee arthritis or hip pain or a low back pain another application is especially in diabetic food or ulcers in the food we are able to understand where the excess pressure is coming in to the feet based on that we are able to guide the uh, orthotist or the uh, foot uh, uh, orthotist to make a special footwear for diabetic patients again these are very well used in various clinics in bangalore various hospitals in bangalore and the last you can see a gait trainer robotic gait trainer and in front of him there is a screen so as this person walks it's a, and that is an uh, that is a paraplegia a spinal cord injury patient and here you can imagine a spinal cord injury patient you as you all know he cannot walk but here uh, the here a gait training is given to the patient with various uh, proposed theory Uh, one of the proposed theory is this gait training one of the help uh, effect of this gait training is it helps to prevent the osteoporosis which is seen as a long term uh, risk uh, factor in almost all spinal cord injury patients because of lack of weight bearing through the joints so this gait training helps them to maintain the integrity of joints bones and prevent the leg complications and many of the hospitals in bangalore are uh, having this robotic but though still it is a little costly to take this I'm but right. i think oh, uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, shall i stop for a minute and shall i come back to you the continue. audience and you continue doctor yeah uh, so here that person is walking into this uh, looking into the screen and walking and uh, it is uh, like prevent it prevents a lot of complications immediate as well as late complications which is seen in spinal cord injury and another important thing is there is something called central pattern generators so which are very well established in animals mammals except human beings because of the development of a uh, nervous system of uh, the evolution of nervous system in human beings Uh, when the nervous system is injured especially the spinal cord injuries uh, when there is spinal cord is injured the part below the level of injury is go for paralysis or the movement dysfunction and the sensory level as well as at the motor level but what we have seen in animal models and rat models and other mammal models even though we cut the spinal cord even though we cut the the hind limbs the part below the spinal cord the part below the level of injury they by training by putting the monet training they are able to bring the movements back or they are able to walk back but when it comes to human this is difficult we are not able to bring the same thing uh, in human beings uh, but what uh, the scientists could see there are still there are central pattern generator which will this pattern generator will uh, they 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 make this stereotypic leg movements which is which they with this stereotypic leg movements that is the movement of the legs without the knowledge which of the conscious knowledge of the person uh, walking which happens in a normal stage which is uh, which, which is not happening in Indi in human beings but which is happening in the animal model so uh, the scientists are curious to know whether this gait training robotic gait training which stim which simulate and stimulate the normal walking pattern over a period of time can regenerate or reestablish this central pattern generator which are identified in spinal cord of human beings which may slowly pick up uh, the gait pattern which is an auto gait is actually an automatic activity uh, uh, consciousness is uh, conscious active uh, the conscious uh, involvement is not there once you start walking but uh, but uh, it need little more explanation but i just want to uh, tell you this is what the uh, robotic device is trying to do i'll go to the next slide okay so now we are going to an another important development in the field of physiotherapy that is the world of fascia 
the we all know we all know fascia as a connective tissue or a supporting tissue but now the recent research on facial uh, anatomy and facial physiology says fascia is a highly dynamic tissue which has more proprioceptors and more sensory receptors than the skin and the joints and there is always a constant communication between the central nervous system and the fascia which is which is uh, which is making the human movements more precise which is making the human uh, i'm talking from the moment point of view human moment point of view which is making the human movements more precise which is uh, with on the background it is helping to develop the right posture and it is uh, uh, it plays a huge role in uh, improving the proprio it is it is giving a lot of proprioceptive feedback to the central nerve central nervous system and making our mobility better so this research uh, has reached a point that uh the fascia the study of the fascia they, the scientists could find a kind of a cells called fasciocytes which are producing hy hyaluronic acid and which lubricates the tissues which lubricate the muscles when they slide over each other and this uh, this uh, learning of uh, fasciocytes and the production of hyaluronic acid could uh, explain Uh, the joint immobility or joint restriction post uh, immobilization and even so the conventional thing is post uh, immobilization or post surgery the scar tissue the tightness of a muscle or the muscle atrophy was the conventional approach okay muscle will be atrophied when we don't use it uh, the scar tissue which is formed post surgery which is which is hard but the facial uh, uh, research says it's not only the scar tissue as well as the muscle atrophy is not the major thing which is restricting a patient movement which is which is preventing a patient to come back to his normal activity or function it is the restriction of the fascia it is the restriction of the fascia is this uh, the various uh, facial sites which are destroyed which are uh, they are not able to uh, come back or they are undernourished and uh, the stiffness among the fascia within the fascia and the various other connective tissues the skin uh, the fat tissue the muscles the periosteum uh, 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 the additions among these structures are making the movement difficult and the uh, recovery taking a long period of time so this understanding of the fascia and its structure has developed has led into various facial manipulation techniques i'll just play a video can you just play that video uh, that uh, uh, there is a you can just play that video yeah that's right so here this uh, here uh, that therapist is using an instrument to release the adhesions in the achilles tendon and the patient is suffering from plantar fasciitis and uh, so here the adhesions in the achilles tendon which is causing the plantar fascia to get very tight and causing inflammation in the plantar fascia so here the patient uh, here the therapist is releasing the fascia in the achilles tendon as well as the calf muscles which in turn reflect in the uh, plantar fascia so here on the right hand side you can see various instrument the physiotherapist use depending on the contour of the body whether it is a neck whether it is shoulder whether it is a back and these different uh, instruments has got different names as well so and this is helping in restoring movements and improving movements after various surgical and post immobilization as well as it is also in general used in sports physiotherapy pediatric physiotherapy gynec physiotherapy and various uh, and even neurophysiotherapy these are the recent things i could see there are uh, physiotherapists from india they are taking patents and they are coming up with uh, various uh, uh, you know innovations and they are taking patents in that innovations and they are recognized by the world by, by in this facial manipulation technique and uh, and so since we know the fascias do a, a much bigger role than just supporting as a supportive tissue and even the research is saying the fascia can actively contract and relax like a muscle so this help in generation of force within a muscle if the fascia is not actively contracting and relaxing it in turn reflect the muscle activity and the muscle cannot perform even though 
uh, we see at the muscle, even though if we check the muscles individually or manual muscle testing, if we find five out of five, four out of five, but at the functional level or at the functional level means at the executional level, like walking, standing, sitting, the patient is not able to perform. So this facial manipulation is improving the patient's movement and reducing the rehabilitation and recovery time. We'll go. And similarly, the, uh, there are a lot of devices using facial manipulation we will i'll show you the other instruments what we use can we go to the next slide next slide yeah so cupping is an another instrument we use it for facial manipulation a vacuum cupping and the right hand side you can see needling of the fascia and the particular sensitive tissue uh, to remove the addition to break the additions to remove the trigger points which in turn reflect in the patient's movement and pain relief and Fascia being a very sensitive tissue, facial re release helps the pain to helps in pain management and reducing the pain, uh, like uh, like uh, never like before. Like uh, facial manipulation has helped uh, physiotherapists to reduce in, uh, to really uh, help the patients in reducing their pain and improving their movement. We'll go to the next slide. So then later, other thing is the application of mind-body therapies in physiotherapy. In physiotherapy, basically the application of yoga, tai chi and various uh, pilates like exercise program. Physiotherapists are learning. I myself learned yoga from an institute in Lonavala, Pune, uh, Kaivalya Dham. And I'm using yoga as a therapist to those people. Sometimes exercise doesn't uh, suit to all class of population. So yoga helping, uh, yoga various yogic asanas are helping in rehabilitation, improving movements. So that is the mind-body therapy. And moreover, when it even mind, why it is called mind-body therapy, we are able to induce a lot of relaxation among the participants, uh, among the patients. And here, as we know, uh, uh, like the, the most of the patients who are in pain or who are in kind of a, they are always they are in a, they are they are in their sympathetic tone is on an higher side or they are in a fight or flight response. They come with an hypertonic body. The muscles are not relaxed. So introducing such therapies, mind body therapy, breathing exercise, pranayama, are helping. Uh, them to calm down the nervous system or activate their parasympathetic system and uh, bring a relaxation and this is also helping physiotherapists to uh, uh, in the in the field of rehabilitation and yeah we'll go to the next slide i'm just going fast because i know it's 10 o'clock so uh, i'll just sum up in a few slides and uh, maybe uh, if you have any questions we can uh, or if you want doctor if you want to stop me and continue in the next session i am okay with that because my whole intention is whatever I am telling, it should be uh, it should reach all audience. If it is few more uh, slides only, you can come. Oh, I think uh, there are. Uh, yeah, I need to know which slide. Yeah, I think it is only few more slides. Yeah. You uh, can yeah, I think it's almost. Briefly. Yeah, it is. But almost, how long will you take? Uh, maybe Dr. I think. Pradeep, how long I, you take? I think, doctor, it maybe. In 10 minutes, I will be able to finish. You can uh, you can touch upon the topics briefly. Yeah. So I'll just go through the topics briefly because all these are, though it is uh, like, you know, innovations I need. Sometimes I need to talk in detail so that you understand. So this is the, another thing which is happening in the physiotherapy field is application of uh, therapeutic nutrition, which is helping in enhanced tissue repair, improve the energy level of the patient, reducing inflammation. There are, we develop anti-inflammatory diet and give it to the patient, which is helping in along with other anti-inflammatory medicines they are taking and helping in overall well-being of the patient. So therapeutic nutrition is really helping in the field of physiotherapy. And go to the next slide. So these are the modern modalities again, which is come uh, recently, which has come into helping in reducing the pain, which is called a pulsed electromagnetic field, a wonderful device, which helps to stabilize, uh, which works cellular levels, stabilizing the uh, uh, membrane potential of a cell so that the inflow and outflow of the nutrients and metabolic waste are re-established in those tissues which are injured. Uh, we will talk about this technology in uh, maybe in the in the future in the future talk if possible. But this is a very wonderful device helping in uh, inflammation, circulation, and uh, uh, bone healing and various tissue healing, especially in uh, those tissues which are not healing uh, ulcers, chronic ulcers. Go to the next slide. 
So another thing is red light therapy, otherwise called near infrared. You would have heard of infrared, but here uh, it is near infrared. The nano, uh, the wavelength is different around 650 to 850 nano nanometer wavelength. This is this is also works at a cellular level where the mitochondria are being manipulated or being influenced by the presence of this sunlight, by the presence of this infrared light. Especially the cytochrome oxidase are being activated and the ATP production is enhanced. This will correct the uh, energy crisis in a cell which is trying to repair itself. M many of the cells which are repairing, there is an energy crisis and the application of near infrared is helping the tissues to heal. This again a recent development. We'll go to the next slide. Uh, shockwave therapy, it's a very recent uh, application of uh, high intensity sound waves, uh, especially in treating heart tissues or heart connective tissues like plantar fascia, agilis tendon, uh, like heavy, like strong connective tissues. And very effective within a short period of time, we are getting results. Um, we'll go to the next slide. And collaborative approaches with uh, now the nowadays physiotherapists are also very well aware of the PRP stem cells and prolotherapy, and uh, they are very well in rapport with the various uh, surgeons and other uh, doctors. And uh, the physiotherapists are sending patients to doctors to uh, do uh, sending patients to the doctors uh, like since they know the importance of PRP in various rehabilitation like uh, small small knee injuries, small small knee uh, like uh, injuries, shoulder injuries. Uh, this PRP and prolotherapy has been helping patients a lot. Stem cell is still under research, but some patients show good results. Some patients, especially in avascular necrosis of femur, stem cell therapy has been has helping some patients. And I personally have treated some patients. I'll go to the next slide. And conclusion, it's all like, you know, uh, the physiotherapy has become a dynamic field, evolving and specialization has happened. Now physiotherapists are, are becoming a specializing in the field of orthopedic, neurology, pediatric, gynecology, CBR, sports medicine. Uh, the post-graduation is, uh, is provided in all these different fields. And as I told you, innovations and researches are happening in India itself and good quality researches are coming out. Precision and reliability has increased due to the application of artificial and intelligence as well as new technology. Collaborative relationship with the various fields, various other medical fields, as I told you about the uh, and uh, uh, the doctors we are uh, interacting with. Healthcare impact and impact is like you no know, uh, the the outcomes are very fast and very precise, and it is increasing the uh, op like optimistic outlook in the sense like you no. Know, we are uh, the the field, the physiotherapy field itself is optimistic about providing good quality service uh, uh, to the medical profession. So sorry, I took a bit of time, uh, but uh, no, no, no. I usually <laughs> uh, no so I. Uh, uh, thank uh, so you very is... much. Thank you very much. Um, it was a very insightful and exhaustive. You did give us a uh, lot of information about the new technologies. We are amazed, definitely amazed by some of them, especially the Thank spine you. videos, robotic and all what you showed us. Um, spine. You. Maybe and when we get, if any future opportunity comes, I can talk on individual, individual things. Yeah, on individual methodologies of the treatment. And uh, there is only one question on the chat box, which says, what are the new techniques for sports medicine? sports rehabilitation or sports medicine see uh, as i told you one of the uh, like you no know, facial manipulation is one of the thing which we use in sports rehabilitation as i told you various devices instruments which is reducing the uh, rehabilitation time and another thing we use gait analysis uh, 2d models 3d models we use various sensors in the uh, in the athletes and we ask them to do the activities we uh, analyze the moment uh, we, to improve their performance and uh, dry needling, PEMF, these are the things which we use in the sports rehab and uh, taping techniques. Uh, there are uh, these are the current trends, which all requires an explanation how it works. But uh, these I, are the latest I, things. I get your point. Uh, there is a question on YouTube which says indications for PRB and your experience on that. 
okay indications of brp so in um, in cases whenever in initial stages of osteoarthritis like like patellofemoral arthritis initial stage stage 1 of osteoarthritis where we suspect where the where there is a degeneration has started in the cartilage <clears throat> this is one of the thing i uh, suggest like uh, along with the physiotherapy <clears throat> It has helped some patients. It has not helped. It, it has helped many of the patients. I should say, out of uh, like you know, out of twenty uh, patients, at least fifteen patients has helped with PRP. One is your voice early is breaking. Stages of osteoarthritis. Second thing is minor tendon injury, minor injuries, grade one injuries at sprain level, strain level. It helps the tissues to repair. The regenerative capacity is high when the PRP is injected. and it helps the physiotherapist uh, to uh, go ahead with the rehabilitation because we know the body is getting a lot of support from the prp and the regeneration is going to be faster it increases the confidence of physiotherapist to move ahead with exercise to go ahead with exercise and yeah yeah there are no more questions your uh, video on uh, your video on uh, uh, helping the para paraplegic patients that was wonderful my two three patients are paraplegic and uh, having very uh, bad uh, conditions i can see the family members are also very uh, bored from uh, his or her disease so uh, how much cost it will take mr pradeep to get this ai or robotic uh, um, assistance to paraplegic patients <clears throat> uh doctor uh, now most of these robotic devices are imported uh, some are from japan and uh, some of the robotic devices are from us so uh, like now these robotic devices are more common in hospitals which are having an exclusively neuro rehabilitation setup like in bangalore sakra hospital uh, <clears throat> sakra hospital in manipal hospital i think uh, they have got some robotic devices uh sakra has got and uh, there is an hospital uh, ayur green in kerala uh, uh some uh, one hospital i am i'm not sure about all in the institute of medical science but to my knowledge they have started robotic rehabilitation uh, dr sanjay is from ahmedabad anything you are aware of ahmedabad so this is costing in a uh, nearly a uh, crore nearly a uh, nearly a crore of uh, investment is required nearly 1 crore of re requirement uh, for this robotic assistive walking devices uh, some uh, there are many hospitals in north india even dehradun also when i visited to see a patient there is one hospital in dehradun has also got this uh, gate training device but it is uh, now it is a lot of collaborative approaches are there doctor we don't need to invest it there are people who are ready to collaborate with your center and they are coming in collaboration than your own investment many of the hospitals in bangalore are are doing in collaboration with the foreign universities and foreign hospitals but it is uh, useful for a newly paraplegic patient or uh, for those also who are paraplegic since 5 7 years it is useful because in it is useful in both the cases uh, like in uh, like in all the cases of paraplegia or any cardiology uh, whatever the case we see the late complications as uh, like as i told you the application is not only to uh, not uh, the application that uh, here, here you can see that individual is moving his legs and joints in a very synchronized as well as in a very safe environment so that when a person walks with a afo kfo hkfo like devices Uh, we don't we cannot uh, uh, like uh, the refined movements are not happening in the body and they usually end up in some kind of injuries to the hip back or knee but when people walk in such devices the since the movements are very refined the ligament injury tendon ligament uh, tendon injuries are very less second thing it helps to promote the bone health so in late uh, patients who have uh, like you know 5 or 6 year old injury they can still come to the rehabilitation center to maintain the health of the bodily tissues Uh, so when i always tell the span according to patients exercise is not only recovery like 
to bring preserve the body parts which are not moving which are completely paralyzed so there are a lot of my patients they don't know how to attend that part which is not moving and if i have when they undergo fast and early degeneration at the skin level at the nail level at the joint level and i sometimes i see them at a very uh, it is very sad to see at a very bad state of degeneration at the skin and all those things so such robotic devices help prevent almost all kind of complications of such patients nice okay we I think, uh, next we time uh, dr pradeep case based approach i think we will benefit more yeah yes Suppose... doctor since uh, i can go with such topics about individual cases so <clears throat> the common one. individual modalities <laughs> Okay. If uh, any new technique for herbs palsy, there is a question. There is a question in the chat box. Oh, oh yes. In case of nerve regeneration, as I told you, uh, near infrared, near infrared, where the nerve cells, when some the mitochondrial activity in the nerve cells can be enhanced, the mito in enhancing the mitochondrial activity in the nerve cell in in turn helps the regeneration and repairing process in the nerves the mitochondrial activity the atp production these are very essential whenever any tissue undergoes undergoes an injury there is always an energy crisis because the membrane potential is disturbed the inflow of nutrients and outflow of nutrients metabolic wastes are disturbed so and the energy production the mitochondria the other organelles are uh, uh, like destroyed or they are regenerating so the uh, the exposure to near infrared rays help in the regeneration. This I practically use in my clinic. In my practice, I use near infrared help in the regeneration of the nerve. Second thing, the application of PM, a pulse electromagnetic field, that also stabilizes the uh, membrane potential. And this also helps the cells to function optimally when they are trying to regenerate or repair. So it is applicable at the nerves. It is applicable at nerve injuries. As well as uh, as well as at the other tissue injury, bone injury, or muscular injury, or other soft tissue injuries. Another uh, thing about uh, 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 palsy is use, uh, usage of uh, uh, robotic assistive devices, uh, which are there in India, but not in all the hospitals because of the cost. But if the patient is willing to go and uh, explore and uh, inquire, it, it, this facility service is available in India. Initially, uh, when I started in uh, the rehabilitation, especially the neuro rehabilitation, personally, I know many of us have went to Australia, Germany, Canada for robotic rehabilitation. Now the facility will not travel outside India. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Pradeep Totekat. It was a very informative, insightful, and enlightening session. Really enlightening for us family physicians because we are not aware of so many developments in the field of physiotherapy. And uh, we will take this forward in case-based or, you know, different modalities. Okay, how is this modality used? And in which case we need to use? Because that's the information we want. You we should refer the patient for what kind of modality and uh, we, how will that person benefit. So looking sure. forward to more from you in the future. Thank you, Dr. Satya. Sure. Thank you, Enlace Code Technology. Thank you, Rushil. And uh, we'll call it a day because it's already 10.20 now. Uh, thank you, uh, Rushil. You can end the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, members, viewers. Uh, it is you who keep us active. Thank you.